Good morning, lovelies. Zoe Two Dots here and Cinnamon with some more Pokemon Go goodness for you. And today we're going to jump into my top tips for Go Fest. Uh, pretty much a mountain of tips, but all pretty essential for attending a Go Fest or a Safari Zone for Pokemon Go. This guide is going to be focused around Chicago Go Fest, but you can pretty much roll any of these tips into any of the Go Fests or Safari Zones. Let's be honest. I'm going to cover both physical, like in real life tips, and then also in game tips to prepare both yourself outside of the game and in the game for Go Fest. So if you want to skip to just the in game tips, if you've already got your life locked down and you know what you need to physically attend, jump to this time code. Otherwise, we're going to start with the physical tips. The first tip this is starting even before you even get to the event. This is the like pre pre-prep days before just about bring to your hotel bring with you if you're going by yourself with a squad bring a power strip a power board power strip whatever you call it in your country bring one of these bad boys because lord knows that hotel rooms and airbnbs do not have enough power sockets to charge every single device that we need if you're charging your phone multiple power packs your friends power packs their phones cameras any other devices that you're bringing your go pluses or your pokeball pluses if you take those your gotchas all that jazz. Hello, William. Bring a power strip. This is an absolute lifesaver. This is like a travel hack to the... Bye. Travel hack, like extreme. Don't fight over power socket spaces. Take a power strip and just load that bad boy up. Next tips roll into the night before. So following on from that power strip hot tip, charge your stuff the night before, please, for the love of God. It is so disappointing to rock up to one of these events and check your power bank and you're like, oh my God, I'm the biggest idiot. I didn't charge this up the night before. Basic tip, but just get it done. Also the night before, make sure that you are hydrated and well nourished. So this starts with, you know, just drinking a ton of water the night before, eating a decent dinner and breakfast because guaranteed the lines will be long by the time you realize you're hungry on GoFest day. And as long as you can like have something in your stomach, just kind of keep you going for that little bit extra, you'll be well better off prepared. I also recommend uh, investing if you can, if there's a Daiso nearby you, get some powdered Picari Sweat. That's a Japanese brand of drink, uh, but it's an electrolyte replacement. So just drinking tons and tons of water in the heat here at GoFest isn't going to keep you hydrated. You do need to replenish electrolytes either through food or through like an isotonic drink like a Picari Sweat. It's kind of like Powerade or Gatorade without or like the sugary crap in it uh, it tastes way better and if you have the chance beforehand mix it up the night before uh, and freeze it so it's nice and cold for the next day things to bring with you to go fest day uh, charge cables obviously but bring a second one bring a spare because guaranteed one of your friends or a stranger will lose one break one forget one whatever it might be, take two, just so you can either be a legend or help yourself out if you get stuck. Reusable water bottles. So uh, on the GoFest guide, it does say to only bring sealed water bottles. So start with that. Uh, and then once you consume that or you know bring an empty reusable bottle, make sure you refill throughout the day and stay hydrated. It's serious, like you need to keep drinking. Uh, it was incredibly humid last year and I don't anticipate it will be that much different this year. The things to bring for GoFest as well do include a clear backpack. Uh, there is nowhere in like the prohibited items that says like regular backpacks aren't allowed. It says no framed backpacks, which I'm not sure what that means specifically. Uh, play it safe, bring the clear backpack. I would recommend possibly the clear bum bag just because an actual backpack gets so sweaty when it's plastic. You can also use mesh backpacks. Those are perfectly fine. But basically, if you're a Thursday day player, we're going to be the guinea pigs uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if we have a better idea of what was allowed in and things like that. So yeah. Make sure that you check in at the correct entrance. North or south will be dictated on your ticket, on your confirmation. Do not go to the alternate entrance. Do not be lazy. Do not think, oh, my hotel's closest to the south entrance. I'll just check in there. Your ticket will not work at the, like, at the alternate entrance. You have to go to the correct entrance. So make sure you do that. It'll save you having to like walk all the way to the other end without having any gameplay during that walk as well. So yeah, start at the right start. After that, slip, slop, slap. I don't think that's an ad campaign in the States at all because you guys don't have a giant gaping hole in the ozone over your country. Uh, so Australia is pretty hardcore on sun protection. Slip, slop, slap. Get the sunnies, get the sunscreen and get some sunglasses. Protect your neck, basically. You want to have some sunscreen on because it is so humid in Chicago as well. You're going to be sweating a lot. Make sure you reapply. Please reapply. Every two hours at least. Up after that is baby wipes. So when you've got those sunscreeny hands on your phone screen, no thank you. Baby wipes to save the day for just about everything. Get rid of your sunscreeny hands, get rid of your sweaty body a couple of times throughout the day and just feel a little bit more refreshed. Another hot tip is to bring uh, small packets of tissues. Last year, the toilet paper did run out 
and I was so lucky that I had a spare packet of uh, like just small packet of tissues. Bring a whole bunch, keep yourself protected for like whatever, li like little bits and pieces you got covered in tomato sauce somehow. Oh, and this sucks. Go for it. Little, little tissues, you're all covered. While we're in like the little bits and pieces as well, band-aids are not a bad idea as well. Mostly for blisters if you're getting anything on the back of the heel because you'll be walking for the majority of the day. I know for comm days and research days, we're kind of used to, you know, three hour walking times. Uh, this is a full day event. Just have yourself covered. You'd rather be comfortable than, you know, walking around with blistery feet or having to take your shoes off. Bring snacks. Prepackaged food is perfectly allowed at GoFest. Seriously, bring some like decent muesli bars, some trail mix, um, just some proper hearty snacks that are gonna get you through the day. For myself, uh, I was kind of like too late in the day when I realized how hungry I was and the food truck lines did get pretty dense around, you know, the midday to two o'clock line. So definitely take some snacks to keep you out of trouble. Uh, because those food truck lines will pile up most likely. If, if, if as well, if you happen to be staying like pretty close to the event, if you're like within probably a 10 or 15 minute walking distance from the event, uh, it would definitely be feasible to go back to your hotel, have a quick lunch break, get some actual like proper food, uh, and maybe even have a shower to have a quick freshen up and head back out. Definitely for myself where I was staying last year for GoFest, I was way too far away. I could not do this. This year, I'm pretty close to the park, which is awesome. So I'm actually pretty tempted to do this myself. Um, just because you do get so sweaty through the day. If you are close to your hotel, take a quick 30 minute breather, go and get freshened up, have some nutrition come back out feeling fully refreshed and vitalized it's a pretty decent tip if you're someone that's staying too far away for that again baby wipes even just a sweet little baby wipe freshen up and 15 minutes in the shade is going to be a nice little refresher for you make sure to bring a clip lock bag or waterproof case the clip lock bag is obviously the cheaper of the options in case it does rain uh, last year at GoFest, I think it rained on two of the days. It wasn't for too long, thankfully, uh, but definitely if you want to keep catching and keep playing, you can still play through a um, clip lock bag screen if your phone isn't waterproof. So, I mean, iPhone 10s are waterproof if you're rocking that. I know a lot of Android phones are waterproof as well. If your phone is not waterproof, clip lock bag, way cheaper than buying one of those life proof cases. Make sure you're wearing some humidity appropriate clothing. It's going to be pretty toasty. Uh, if you're going to be someone who is like, you know, wanting to have your arms out in the sun, you're going to be risking you know, a bit more in terms of the heat stroke and the, the sun. I know the sun isn't as extreme in the US as it is in Australia, but still, if you're getting more sun on your skin, you're gonna get, you're gonna be sweating probably a fair bit more. Try to wear clothes that are breathable and comfortable. Like you really, you just wanna be like maximum comfort for this thing. No hoodies, no jumpers, no sweaters, no like tight fitting, overheating clothing. Dress comfy, dress appropriately. Here comes the cat, thanks mate. While we're on clothes as well, make sure you have got some decent socks that breathe too. So like proper exercise socks and comfortable shoes. Seriously, don't start breaking in a new pair of joggers or something uh, the week before GoFest. That is going to destroy you. Make sure you've got your, you know, your old faithfuls that just, they go hard. You know they're comfortable to wear. Don't risk, you know, oh, I bought some new joggers for GoFest. And then they're the most uncomfortable thing. Go with the shoes that you know you can walk an entire day in and still be comfortable. Bring yourself one of those sneaky little like towels for your neck, cover it in some cold water, whatever it might be. Put it on your neck, a good little cool down tip too. And for the just in case, and if you've got space in your bag, grab a poncho, as I said as well, with the rain and things like that. The ponchos will have a create a pretty horrifying, terraforming dome with your body being the planet, producing enough humidity and atmosphere within that thing to probably sustain a small colony of humans. It will be humid as heck inside that poncho, but if it's raining heavily, it's going to keep you dry and not soggy and disgusting. So it's a bit of a toss up there. I would say only put on the poncho if it starts pouring. For things to do and participate in at GoFest, make sure you get yourself familiarized with what's happening, uh, where the team lounges and things are like that. There should be charge stations as well in the team lounges. And last year they were doing giveaways to win shirts and medals and uh, other things like that. So make sure you like, you know, if you need a snack break, go and hang out in one of the team lounges and participate in some of the challenges because those t-shirts were exclusive as giveaway prizes. You couldn't buy those shirts at GoFest. They were only if you participated and won in these little comps and things like that. So it might've been who's got the longest, you know, walk distance for the buddy or who's got the most 
PG or whatever it might be. Just these silly little comps, but plenty of prizes to win and participate in. Make sure you check the list of prohibited items as well. There's a lot of stuff that is perfectly allowed, like blankets, like picnic blankets, strollers, food, all that jazz. Yes, you can bring your cameras. I know last year there was confusion about like professional grade cameras. Like, will my DSLR be okay? Yes. Your DSLR, if you've got like a chunky boy DSLR with the microphone and all that jazz on it, that's perfectly fine. No commercial grade cameras. That means you can't like rock up as a news crew and just start filming GoFest without, you know, prior permission or a media pass. There's rules in there about GoPros as well specifically. Uh, so make sure you do check that out if you're someone who's using a GoPro for GoFest. And of course the list of prohibited items, no glass, no commercial cameras, no vapes, no e-cig, no drones, no chairs, things like that. Make sure you do give it a good little read, guys, just in case. Now let's jump into the in-game tips. First tip is to, like, honestly, make a sign for what special trades you want. So the tip before that would be to line up some special trades before GoFest because it will save you dust. Failing that, of course, the sign is fantastic, but line up some special trades before GoFest. I mean, Meesprit, Azelf, and Yuxi are going to be hot trade commodities. GoFests are a pretty good spot for everyone to be, you know, coming from all different walks of life, different countries and things like that. So if you can try and jump into different discords, share your friend code with someone who you know has something you want, you've you know, agreed to trade this for this, build up your friendship to at least, please aim for at least ultra friend. It will save you so much dust if it is a new Pokedex entry, especially if it's a new shiny entry. But failing that, say you get to the Chicago day and you don't have, you haven't had a chance to level up with anyone. The sign is supreme. I have this Pokemon, I want these Pokemon, whatever it might be. Like, honestly, you could stand in the middle of the pit and be like, I have Relicanth. And people are going to swarm to you and be like, I would like your Relicanth. What would you like? Like, it's pretty easy to find some special trades. If there's something that you want, make it clear, make it on a sign. Someone always come up and tap and be like, hey, I've got the shiny Sableye. Can we, can we do the swap? And, you know, easy done. Next up, you want to make at least, at least... 500 storage space in your Pokemon storage. We don't know if they're going to expand storage before go first. I would not risk it. I would not bet on it. 500 storage space. You can do it. I believe in you. Don't feel guilty if you do have to transfer or delete some shinies. If you got 50 shiny Swinub on Swinub Com Day, are you going to do 50 special trades? Are you going to power up 50 Swinub? Are you going to do anything with those 50 Swinub? Probably not. Don't feel guilty if you have to transfer half or 10 or whatever it might be of those Swinub to create some space for yourself. It's not like you're not evil. It's okay. It feels bad to transfer a shiny, but you forget about it in a day. Trust me. You can make some space. Make sure you bring some things to offer up for traits as well. Uh, if you're traveling internationally or even if you're traveling domestically, there's a wide variety of USA regionals. Bring those along as well. Even for people that might not need a special trade, they are pretty fun to give to people who you know might have one carnivine, but you can give them another one that might go lucky, things like that, you know, easy trades. But yeah, 500 storage space and you will be having to transfer within that storage space as well as you play. You will easily catch more than 500 Pokemon. Uh, at a Pokemon Go Fest. So make sure you've got the space and make sure you know what you want to delete out of that, like that working space at Go Fest. Next up, if you are someone who is working on iPhone, iOS, you can do a thing called uh, like IV strings. So what you want to do is find the text replacement in your general settings, jump into here. So as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of uh, IV strings already set up with here, Aaron 100, Vega 100. I pretty much just use a shortcut of four letters of the Pokemon's name and then the you know 100 number. So I'll leave a link in the description as well to the website that generates or has, you know, it's a, it's a community based kind of like cache of all these 100 IV strings. For example, here, this one is for Barboach. What you will do is cap copy the string under Barboach for a potential 100% CPs. Paste it into the top line where it says phrase, make whatever your shortcut you want it to be, save that shortcut. And then when you jump into the game, if I was to type in B-A-R-B and then 100, hit return. As you can see, nothing's popped up. None of the current bar boats that I have in my storage uh, could be 100%. None of them apply to that 100% like possibility at all. So I can safely transfer these three. If all I care about is 100% IVs, I can safely transfer those three. Doesn't matter. Bye bye, farewell Barboach. Another example here, I've got uh, my 100 IV string from Magikarp as Carp 100. 
put in the return and as you can see the current ones that are potentially 100% have popped up that one there that's labeled 100% I have checked it before but this one here say this 1117 Magikarp at the start uh, pops up without obviously it wouldn't be named I'd have to go in appraise do a quick check wonder HP attack exceeds I can see there that it's not 100% um, you know, when you put in these 100 IV strings, it will still pop up things that aren't necessarily 100%. There'll be a whole bunch of stuff in there, and you will need to go and appraise, like, maybe those 10 Pokemon. But at least then you can kind of, like, whittle through way faster. And then I know any other Magikarp that are in my storage can just be transferred. Again, this kind of only applies if you care about 100% IVs. Um, there are strings in there as well for trash IVs. So it'll pretty much filter and give you the CPs for anything that is guaranteed under 90%. So if you're someone who's like, oh, what if it's like 91 or 93 and things like that, maybe use the trash IV strings or only show you things that are definitely under 90. You go and select all of those, transfer them. Um, this is gonna help you with that working storage as you play. So go through and set up the IV strings on iPhone uh, before GoFest day. Again, bonus points if you are playing on Friday, Saturday or Sunday because you'll be seeing you know, what people have been catching on the Thursday to know what other strings to add, but at a bare minimum, uh, add all of the Pokemon that are on the promotional poster. So things like Swinub, Pachirisu, Horsey, stuff like that. That way you can have those strings prepared, you can check IVs as you go and play throughout the day and help you clean up your storage as you go. And again, make sure when you say if you're using the 100 IV string, it will give you anything that could be 100% IV. Just because it pops up in that filter does not mean it is guaranteed to be 100%. You do need to manually check it. Uh, and then if it's not, transfer it away, free space, there you go, happy days. The only reason this doesn't really work for most Android phones as well is because that it doesn't allow you to have a, well, basically such a long text replacement. Most of the Android phones will cap the number of characters in a text replacement. Your phone might be different, so make sure to check that. Um, but yeah, iPhone kind of like allows for an unlimited amount of characters in a text replacement. And my last in-game tip is that if there is special research, maybe get up to the second stage of the research before you start walking through the park. So last year, um, there was basically kind of two start points at the north and the south, and then all of the biomes and things were kind of like on the walking track between the two. You check in at one of these two points. I would recommend starting your quest at one of those two points because for me, uh, for the Celebi quest, the second phase of that required you to catch different types of Pokemon. And these types of Pokemon were spawning in these biomes that were along the trail, but I hit that second part of the quest when I was halfway across the trail. So I had to finish walking, get half of that quest done, hide out at the, at the North Team lounges while it was raining, Pretty much wait for the rain to pass until I could go back down all the way back down to the first kind of like starting point to get the last few biomes that I needed for that quest so it took me quite a bit longer to get through that second phase because I was just kind of like out of sync with where I should have been on the actual walking trail so I'd recommend either asking people who might already be partway through their quest uh, what the next stages are if you don't mind those you know stages being spoiled or kind of get through the first chunk if the first chunk is achievable where you are at your entrance do that and then start walking once you see the second part because again if it is like last year and if it is you know uh, pokemon type dependent they're going to be spawning in their special regions as we go along that path so yeah something to keep in mind and that is pretty much it guys if you have got a hot tip from a GoFest or a Safari Zone that you've attended, leave it in the comments down below as well. I'll be leaving hearts on my favorite tips that I did not include in this video and ones that I think are helpful. So have a scroll through there and read the other comments from players in the comments section as well. I'll also leave a link to the official uh, Pokemon Go Fest website with the list of prohibited and allowed items. And also there was another really helpful uh, Reddit thread that someone made for basically not only attending Go Fest tips, but attending Chicago tips. So how to get around Chicago the most effectively, the public transport options, uh, food options, hotels, like that kind of stuff. Like a lot of just general getting around tips for Chicago. So both of those links are in the description as well. If you are new, please be sure to subscribe Thank you to everyone who did leave a like and if you'd like additional ways to support the channel links for patreon and merch are in the description down below I'm gonna be sending off the patreon postcards pretty soon today as well So if you want to get more info on the sneaky little patreon postcards get you know monthly signed postcards sent to you Links are all in the description. I hope you have a wonderful wonderful morning noon night Whatever it is for you and I'll catch you guys in the next one Bye